All right, so here is the semifinal match against Fabio uh, Caponio from Italy. Um, I remember this tournament was right before the Pan Am game, so kind of coming into this match, my main focus was really to just not get injured. Um, and so didn't really have a lot of pressure. You can kind of see here, I'm trying to dial in a little bit of my lift depth and height right there. It was a really good um, lift as terms, in terms of height right there, but just a little bit out. And so I think I do get a little bit of a slow start here. Um, and I believe this match does go three games, but let's kind of just talk through kind of my strategy and what I was thinking throughout this match. Here you see again, another um, lift that was out. Usually in the beginning of the games, I like to kind of move the opponent around a little bit, um, especially if I know they're going to be attacking a bit, um, which you see here, he does start out pretty aggressive with a 3-0 start. See here, so he's forcing me to lift again, um, and he's taking most of the initiative on the attack here, but here I'm able to neutralize a little bit, and then I went for a net spin that um, was just a little bit too tight with, with an error. All right, so 4-0 down now. Um, again, I start with the lifts off of the service return. Um, there, off of his smash, I was able to drive it back in. Um, close call, but I did get the point there. All right, so here you see again with the lifts and just really focusing on defending that first smash. And you see there he came in um, and anticipated my backhand recovery as a drop and just pressured my body, which becomes a pretty critical um, or key moment here because I have to pay attention to that for later. Um, again, just a little bit too flat on my service turn there. Um, he was able to cross um, smash me right there because it was just a little bit too flat of a lift. And so there I go with the net off the return um, because he has been pressuring. And so you see on that um, flat exchange or flat smash from him, I was able to take it early so that um, my shuttle was going down and he had to dig for that and, and I got a mistake out of that one. Here I am again with the lift, quality lift. He's not able to attack yet. Another quality lift, big smash. Um, kind of came to a weird area in my hip, which I actually had, I was able to cross that, but um, missed, missed it on the frame just a little bit. 7-2 now, um, here he is trying to take the net high um, because he wants to continue to attack. Um, here, my strategy was really to kind of play a box game with him, meaning I want to have most of my nets um, and blocks past that service line, um, service error there. Um, Got to cut those out, especially if you want to have a chance. But, um, but yeah, I wanted to play more of a box game. And then when he does play it a softer one in front of the service line, I wanted to take the net. So here you see we're both playing a little bit of a box game, just blocking pretty deep. And then there you go, see, when he hit a softer one that was in, the, in it closer to the net, I went in for the net spin, which was the right decision and right move, um, just a little bit too tight and missed it by a little bit. And so he had just missed a net spin right there um, on my cross block. And so that way, on that one instead, he went with the straight lift, um, which I ended up make, losing that point because of another mistake. But you see how players typically change um, really quickly, they adapt very quickly depending on what type of errors they make. And so here you see again my block is pretty far into the court. And you see on that backhand, because he caught me earlier, I took a quick look to see where he was at. And that usually is quite helpful because it lets your opponent know that you are kind of aware of where he is even when you're in a backhand position. So that was pretty key to back him off a little bit. and then just a little bit out on that backhand punch to his forehand side. All right, 11-3 down now. Um, I know I need to speed up a little bit and be a little bit more aggressive with some attack. Most of that first 11 was errors and also lifts that went out. Again, there I just went for a net even though it was way too low. See how I was almost, I mean, even below where the net was and still went for the gamble and tried to hit a net spin, which was just um, too, too high of a risk shot. And so here, a little bit more safe, more passive, playing more of a box game. And here I'm smashing a little bit more now, you see. Um, on that one, on that drive exchange, you see how on his second drive, I blocked it, which was a little bit soft. 
Um, and so I do want to get into a drive game with him, but I also want to make sure that I am continuing to pressure with the drives. See there again uh, with the backhand, he had caught me once already with the um, recovery drop from my backhand. And so this time I, I clear him to the back um, and it wasn't great and it was also in the middle, but I was lucky to get an unforced smash error from him. See how he came in again right there? Um, but I was able to bring it very flat, almost like a half smash on that backhand. But now I am aware and I know that he does want to come in, especially when it's in my backhand corner. Flick serve, there I am with the smash. So again, I, I need to pick up the pace a little bit with the attack, um, which I definitely do in the second set. Um, this first set was definitely just way too slow of a start for me. And I thought I got him with the flick there, just a tiny bit out. Um, but you know, I was trying to give him a, a little bit of a taste of his own medicine. So here you see I'm speeding up a little bit giving him a little bit more pressure um, at the front. Um, again, just too tight on that block. Um, didn't really need to play it that tight. I want to keep these rallies going. You know, typically that's my style now is to get into a little bit of the longer rallies, which right now isn't really working for me. Net exchange um, just went for a re-net. Even if that went over, you saw how close he was standing. He would have just put that away anyways. So there's a good stick smash. Um, probably the first winner that I hit from an overhead. Um, and it's good because even though I'm down so much in this game, a lot of times when you are down this much in a game, um, it's not like you're giving up, but you do want to try as much as you can to find feeling so that when you do start the second game, you can play the shots that you do want to play. And see there with a little bit of backhand variation, I went to um, cross court. And then the second one back to back, I went to the middle. So I'm, try I'm trying to avoid that forehand net side where he likes to come in and just kind of pressure my body off of a backhand. So here, just a pretty good lift. Um, dropped it right in and this is good, right? Like I mentioned at the end of a first game, if you're down this much, you don't really wanna just give it away you want to kind of dial in your feeling or whatever you feel like you're struggling with. And that's what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get good control on my lifts and my pushes and that are a little more flat, but also see if I can dial in my attacking smashes that I will be using a lot later. Um, there was a good drive, a flat game, um, which was also very key because it kind of shows him that I will be ready for this flat, uh, flat exchange. So he's not pushing there because he just lost at a flat exchange. He went for the net, right? Um, here we are now both. I'm just defending a little bit here, trying to get into the rallies, high net, and there I am with an attack, right? Even though I'm down eight points at this point, um, it's still important to kind of get into the style that I want to be playing um, in the second game. So here you see I'm really trying to initiate the, the pressure from the midcourt with the drives. Um, and I will continue basically with this strategy in the second game, you guys will see. Mm, way too loose of a net, and I just stood there. I mean, I didn't even go back to the middle, which I had no chance because he took it so early. A little bit of deception off the serve, and then a good attack at the body. Here I am challenging him at the net, right? I really have nothing to lose at this point, being down eight. He's already at 19. And so um, off of a net spin that he hit, I took it early and really challenged him at the net. Again, trying to replay the net here. Um, try to guide it a little bit out towards the outer line, but just about an inch out. And that was the end of the first set. So again, he's really initiating all of the attack here um, and getting a lot of unforced errors from the pressure that he's giving me. Um, essentially, I have to completely change up my speed the second set, right? I'm way too slow in the first set, way too passive. 
I got maybe one stick smash in, cross court stick smash, that was a winner. Uh, and then the rest were just errors from me, um, whether they were lifts that were out. And so I know starting the second game, the main thing that needs to happen is I need to pick up my foot speed um, and be in more of an attacking and more of an offensive position. Whether I'm attacking it with smashes or not, um, I need to pick up my speed here. All right, so here we go, start of the second. Let's see how, how we start off here. So you see I'm pretty aggressive on the service return right there, right away. I take it quite early. Um, and I'm picking up my speed already. On the smashes, I'm trying not to block too soft here. You see almost all of them are either drives back or pretty deep blocks that are into the court. And there I went for the attack on a stick smash, um, which just went straight into the net, which is fine though. You see I'm already kind of picking up the pace here though. Again, see how aggressive I am on the service return? I take that extremely high um, on the backhand side with the cross net and he tries to challenge me at the net, but I'm already, I'm already up front and I, I brush that for a winner. Again, you see how he's not really in attacking position and I'm really pressuring him with the drives. Here again, really good at the net, just taking it early. And here I'm a lot more aggressive with the attacks. And here challenging him at the net. So you see at the end of the first set, when I was down earlier, I was telling you guys that even if you're down a lot, you can really start to just try different things that you know you might want to need to, might need to implement in the second set. And that was one of them, was I knew I needed to really challenge him at the net with some re-nets. Just a bad serve. Uh, very high. Um, he held it with his forehand a little bit. I was on an island. There was no way I was going to react to that. So you see that block, you see how deep in the court it is. Um, I'm really still trying to get into this box game with him, right? Um, and keep him backed off from the net because he likes to net spin and then go to the back directly for an attack. So again, I'm trying to stay to this box game strategy. Even, if, even after I netted there, you see how I kept kind of a half step in to force him to lift um, and then I was able to attack. Here with the flick serve, um, just very fortunate. Uh, he got me on that cross smash, but it was just a little bit out. So again, see on that forehand side, you see I'm pressuring also now with the drives, right? I'm, I'm driving at his body and pushing with as much power and speed and angle as I can, and kind of following in with that block that you saw to really um, force him to lift or try to get the winner. See, again, getting to his forehand side, right? Um, I know I need to really get to my lift early so that when it does get to his forehand side, he's in a recovery position, which he was again right there. This is a huge contrast from the first set where he was almost taking nothing from the recovery position because I was so late on all of my lifts. See, he's completely changed now. That's probably the first passive lift um, receive, service receive that he's given me. And I should have capitalized there, right? I went for a cross um, slice and just went into the net. Here he is with another flick serve. I'm initiating the attack. And then I keep him uh, away from the net by kind of stepping in. And you see there again, I'm pressuring his body, right? So as soon as I feel like I get a good push at the body or a good angle, I'm stepping in a little bit to follow in and continue with the pressure, right? I don't want to back off because if he blocks or if he gives me a little bit of speed on that drive back, um, it all, almost resets the rally, right? I want to continue that pressure on him. Here I am with the re-net. Ah, so I actually switched my stance right there to cover my forehand side. Um, I would probably missed it by just a half step right there to, to be able to get behind it for the straight smash. Again, with the flick serve, right? Um, see off of his smashes how far into the court I'm putting it into and there off the backhand right I was able to neutralize him by punching it to the back because usually he likes to come in a little bit and at this point you see I'm really picking on his forehand deep corner now um, he showed me that if he's not jumping off of two feet off of a high lift that he's mostly taking recovery and his recovery is coming over to me very very flat which I'm able to then either block cross court or drive at his body.
So here I'm really pushing the pace, right? Again, with uh, again another drive, flat drive to his backhand side. And he knows now that I'm gonna try to come in and pressure him more. And there he tried to pop it past me or over me, but was just a little bit short and I was able to follow up with the, with the smash right there. And there you see, continuing with this drive flat, flat game. And when the soft one comes, I'm really trying to take initiative at the net, right? Um, there he got a good lift and it was a little bit behind me. I knew right away that I should have just brought it down with another drop shot or a recovery drop, uh, but tried to punch clear it out and it went a little bit out. Here I am again, went with the uh, straight backhand drop to his forehand side, which again, I mentioned already once, it's not the best place to play and he was already waiting and just had a simple block and I wasn't able to get there. So I already know that's kind of a danger zone for me and I need to stay away from that. Just a little bit out, just a hair out. That was a big point because 9-7, uh, right? It was either 9-8 and now I'm at 10 playing for one point for the interval. And you guys can already see how different of a pace I'm playing here. Um, really speeding up my acceleration towards the front court, whether I'm lifting or netting, or here again, you see how much I'm pressuring with the flat game, um, which is really working for me almost all of the second game, is this drive game. A lot of singles players, um, they don't like to play too much drives, and in this case, Fabio is at most one more power drive back when I'm hitting my drive, and then he follows up with the soft. So I know that if I can continue with two or three drives, whether it's at the body or um, with good angle that's going down, he usually is gonna be the first to either just block soft, in which case I'm going in for the net spin, or he's gonna try to pop it past me, um, in which case I'm gonna go for the smash. All right, 11-7 now leading in the second. That was a good serve. Again, going for that forehand side, and you see how fast I'm coming in at the net there? And at the backhand again, avoiding that forehand drop. And you see again right there, I'm going with this flat drives at his body. And as soon as the soft one comes, I'm pressuring him at the net right away. So I'm really, really following in on all of my flat game and making sure that I'm not relaxing and letting him back into the rally. Now he's trying to just neutralize with some clears and some lifts. Right, he's not attacking so much right now. He's trying to get me to attack, which is fine for me. I'm initiating the attack. There, I'm giving him the high lift. And this is probably one of the longer rallies so far. Big smash. Again, I'm just finding good depth in my clears and lifts. And there I get a good stick smash in. So for me, I know that I don't need to hit so much complete power smashes, but some of those stick smashes are working. You see with these shots, I'm really trying to initiate the drive game. You see there again, right? As long as he's driving back, I'm not gonna block soft. I'm gonna continue to play that double style drive with just power, power on power. And there I was able to get the mistake again from him with initiating that drive game. There he is with the big smash. Um, just clip the line. See how my lifts are actually a little bit flatter even off the serves return? It's because I almost want to bait him to drive, play the flat game, right? I'm not giving him the super high lift because those he can smash, he can drop, he can clear. But with those really flat lifts, um, I'm really trying to bait him to start the drive game right away. There I am with <clears throat> the backhand recovery um, and then a cross block off of his smash which then I switch stances because I know the lift's coming um, and I get him again on another um, stick smash not so much power and so sometimes after his smashes you'll see I'm either switching my stance to kind of hunt the net or in that case uh, as soon as I blocked his straight smash um, I switched my stance to go for um, the attack shot from the back there I caught him on a flick serve. Um, it was after kind of like, I think we just had both toweled off. Um, and so he wasn't really expecting it. So there from the backhand side, I did more of a, a flat drive, um, which got me out of trouble. And then there again with another cross stick smash. So 
not so much power smash, but these six smashes are kind of working for me and I found a little bit of my feeling. So I want to continue to stick with these. Good service. He got me in the backhand a little bit, but I get out of it with a clear. And here I'm getting into the drive game again. See how much I'm just staying with the flat drives. I just want to stay with the deception. And there I got him with a little bit of a, a, a fake shot from the forehand, uh, sorry, from the backhand in the front. And then I follow with another stick smash to his backhand and then follow again with the cross, um, almost like a flat lift to get the winner. But I'm really, really pushing the pace here, um, as you guys can see with the flat game. Again, staying with the flat game. You see even my, my lifts are very flat and then stick smash. And there I am with the cha uh, challenge him on the re-net. Um, and here I'm getting some confidence, right? Um, my feeling is good, my drives are good. Um, I feel like I'm able to take the net um, and re-net any, anything that he gives me um, in front of the service line. So I'm playing with a little bit of more confidence here and it's, it's obviously showing and it's paying off. Now at 19, I really just kind of want to force him to attack and hit winners, but um, you know, he had a very good lift there and I just kind of brought it down and he made an unforced error. He's also kind of um, at this point obviously knows it's a little bit tough to get back into this game, but um, we're both already probably starting to think about what we want to do in the third game. See, there I kind of, uh, <clears throat> from the backhand side, I don't want to play that forehand net, right? I want to just punch him to the back. All right, started the third game. I know I need to start aggressive again and really start with a good speed and not let him attack too much. So here I am with the net spin and going for the big smash right away, which is just a little bit out. Um, unfortunate because, you know, I was able to get the attacking position in this first point right away. Um, but unfortunately, uh, it was just an uh, enforced error. Here I am getting him deep in the backhand corner, but he was able to get out of it and he went for a smash that was quite, quite high and just went over my head. See, I try to really bring it in past that first service line, but just out by a little bit on the, on the sideline. Again, I'm really trying to initiate the flat game with him. See how my lift right there is a little bit flat, um, but just out again. Um, and so I'm trying to still provoke and bait him to play that flat game, but I need to be careful here because uh, it's turning into some, some errors. Service for certain error right there, um, crucial. And now he goes, starts to go on a run. I think he gets all the way up to eight, I think, to eight one, which was um, really, really bad position for me. See there off of his straight smash, I drive right away, but he's now speeding up at the net and taking the net spin. And this, all, this point kind of all started from service return. I was a little bit relaxed on the service return, which I think I still am here, um, versus that second game where I started out taking all of his services so high and just really being aggressive. See how he's able to attack right away? And he's putting so much pressure on me now. Um, and again, I'm not having such good feeling now in my lifts and it's making it really difficult for me to, to get into the rallies. Here, see, I'm just trying to get into the rally and find some feeling. Here's a good high lift, but again, out, you know. Um, it's almost like he's just drilling. He's bringing the shuttle down, he's blocking, and he's forcing me to lift, block, lift, block, until I either make an unforced error or until he's able to capitalize on a short lift. And here I'm finally able to get to the attack, and I tried to get into that flat game, but you see how he, this one, he was able to pop right over me, right? He's, He's now completely avoiding the flat exchange with me, um, and he was able to find good depth on that lift right there, and then basically catch me in a really bad position where I tried to clear out of it, and he was able to put it away with the smash. You see how he's playing more of a consistent game? Oh my God, I remember this one. So 
he actually got me on the net there um, and brushed it. And I think I was, wasn't even looking. I just turned my head and swing my racket. And I think let's get a second look here. But I was so lucky. It's probably one of the luckiest shots I've ever hit in my life. Just a no look behind the head, backhand swing. So here that cross stick smash is not really working as much now. Well, the fault, second one worked, but the first one, he, he already knows that I'm kind of going for those. 3-8 down now. My goal here is trying to close the gap as much as I can until 11, which there I just, another unforced error, playing way too tight of a net. I think it was the right shot to hit because I was so early. I did take it quite high. I mean, close to that white tape. Um, but again, just one of those unforced errors that um, comes at a bad time. And here, again, service, service return mistake, lifting out again. You know, I'm not really finding good enough height on my lifts because I'm trying to hit those flat ones, which are going a little bit longer out the back. And again, from the attacking side, overhead side, another unforced error. 11-3 down, I think um, that first 11 in this third set was quite a bad start. Um, I think I had three or four lifts that were either out the back line or out the side, and then a couple um, attacking errors as well, right? So this is almost kind of how I started the first set. Um, really just not the way that I kind of want to start the third set because now he's getting momentum and he's probably going to start with some more aggressive play again and some attacking play. And here I'm starting with the net, right? I've made so many lift errors out. Um, that one's just another unlucky bounce. It looked like it almost went over, but just kind of bounced back on my side. Here with a good lift, again, I'm playing. You see how I kind of had my racket up because I want to get into that drive game with him, but he's smart, right? Instead of pushing her, even if my shots, my blocks are a little bit high, he's just re-blocking it back because he's trying to initiate a lift from me. He does not want to get into the drive game from me, um, with me like he did in the second set. Here I am with the drives and the, and the body pressure which is what I was able to do most of second set. Um, and this is probably the only time I was able to execute it in this third set because he's been able to neutralize that strategy for the most part. Here I am with the re-net. Um, just took it early enough, right? Stunted him a little bit. Um, he thought I was gonna lift and uh, wasn't able to react to that. Outside corner serve. And then I follow with the net because I do want to attack. And that one I should have attacked. I knew right away that um, I shouldn't have given a clear right away. I should have put that one down. Again, with the flat lift, he just blocks it down, right? He doesn't want to get into the flat exchange. Here I am, cross block. And that's the cross drop that I wanted to hit in the first set where I made a few errors. You see there, um, I just took a little bit of, a little bit of the risk off. Um, not so tight on the net, but just really um, kind of disguising an attacking smash and then going for that reverse slice. Good service, a little bit bounce off the net, um, but he's able to force a lift out of me and see all the flats, he's just kind of blocking them and putting them down and avoiding the, the flat exchange with me. And here he's toweling off to kind of break my momentum a little bit. Another flick serve. Um, here, see, I, I go in off of the flat exchange, but he's able to get out of this one again. So I had an opportunity to put that away, but now you see he's just moving back and forth with the lifts, and I'm still trying to get back into that flat exchange. Off of his smashes, you see how much I'm putting, how much pace I'm putting onto those. That one might have been out. This is a good rally. And there again with the cross reverse um, drop shot. And you see with that one, I'm really just, as soon as it's coming to my overhead, I'm putting up my form and kind of getting into position. And that's what's really kind of uh, making him take a step back and, and kind of anticipate a smash and, and make my uh, reverse drop so effective is really being in position early. It's not so much the quality of that shot, although it was steep enough, but it's really getting in position early enough so that 
the opponent thinks that you are able or you might smash and then giving them that drop shot. Harris wants a shuttle change, but um, I want to continue with it. Um, I've been getting some good, some better rallies with it, so I don't want a new shuttle that might be a little faster or that my, I might just lift out right away. Outside serve and see how I'm initiating the drive right away, but here he's again able to get out of it with a good, good um, lift from the backhand side. Fifteen eight now. He's just bringing it down. There for once he started the drive actually, um, and I knew that I needed to drive it back, but just was a weird position right over my head. Here he is attacking again, and see how he has a chance to really put it down, but he doesn't. He just blocks. And there I'm able to switch stances and anticipate that cross lift, which is why I was able to get it so early for that straight smash. There I'm already out of position um, from the service, right? He took it very early, um, had his racket up and almost disguised a push, which kind of made me sit a little bit lower um, and then get to that lift a little bit late. And then he was able to follow up with a good body smash. So here I step in to make him uh, feel the pressure from re-netting re um, and then a good high lift. Again, a good high lift, but went for the cross block and just a little bit way too tight. Um, didn't need to, to be so tight right there. And at this point I'm down, I mean, nine points and it's, it's, it's definitely slipping away. So there again with the flatter lift, um, again, those are the type of shots that you know, I wanted to hit to kind of provoke a flat exchange with him. And that one just ended up turning into being a winner. And I think my camera stops recording here, so we are going to change camera angles from the stream. And so there, just a good re-net by him, clip the net. Um, and now I'm down 1910. Uh, definitely a, a huge hill to climb now if I want to get back into this game, um, especially because he is, you know, getting some some good winners. Also, he looks like he has some good feeling at the net, and he's able to get out of the flat exchange with me. See again off of the drive, he just blocks it, and then he tries to pop it over me, which there I was lucky because it went out. But he's kind of dialed in that flat block, and then lift out of my flat, flat exchange. 11-19. There I'm in all sorts of trouble, but I get back into the rally. There you see with his re-net, he's definitely getting really good re-nets. Um, and then a body smash pinned me right at the forehand side. So here I'm already losing kind of the battle at the net because um, he's found some feeling on the re-net, which is forcing me to lift. Um, and that's what really changed this third game. There he anticipated the cross lift and switched his footwork for the, the cross smash. So just a bad start to the third game. Couldn't really find any momentum in this third um, at all. But I think I was, you know, pretty happy with the way I played this match because I know going in, um, my focus was to really just play without pressure and play loosely because knowing that you know we had the Pan Am games the following week after, I wanted to really just stay healthy and injury free, which um, was the ultimate goal at the end of this match.